first and foremost, just offering all honors, praise, respect, acknowledgement, and thanks to the great king of the universe, to the God of our fathers, to the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, and the God of Yaakov. Thanking him for all things and everything. I bid you in the tongue of our forefathers, Shabbat Shalom Lakol. Shabbat Shalom Lakol. Amen. Please be seated. Thanking the Most High God for life. Thanking him for strength. Thanking him for food, clothing, and shelter. Thanking the Most High God because he is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Thanking the Most High God for my life. Thanking him for your lives. The lives of my family and the lives of your families. Thanking the Most High God because he is king, kind, merciful, gracious, and compassionate. Thanking the Most High God that he allowed us to, to come through the Day of Atonement, the uh, Yom Kippur, and hoping and praying that the things that the fast and the affliction of our soul that we put before him was found acceptable before him. We're going to be going through the book of Second Chronicles. First Chronicles okay. is going to be 13, 14, and 15, and a portion of 16. We're going to jump to a couple of different places. But before we start, before we start, I just want to ask Chief Uzael to play a video. So the video is about, it's about four minutes long. And if you could just, if we could just take time, just, just listen. Um, if you can actually see it, it's actually much better. But the graphics on it is, is very basic, but it, it gives a lasting impression. It's a video that I got from, um, that I received from, from Taia. And it's, some, it's a video that I actually played in our, um, in our executive meeting at work. And I, I think that is something that would be helpful here as well. So, Chief Uzzah, whenever you're ready. So what we're going to be doing is Second uh, First Chronicles, beginning in chapter thirteen, and All right, don't worry about it. Um, so what this, what this, um, the portion that we're going to be going through is about the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant, we typically read it in 2 Samuel chapter 6. It's, it's a Maftir's portion. It's a Haftorah portion that, that's going through every year. But the, what you're going to find in 13 and in 15 actually is a, a little bit more information related to that, uh, related to that portion. But before we go into those, I want to read, if you could just go to... First Samuel, First Samuel seven. And just when you get there, just read uh, First Samuel seven one. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. And the men of Kiriat Yearim came and fetched up in the ark of Jehovah and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of Jehovah. Okay, and actually just read 2 as well. And it came to pass on the day that the ark abode in Kiriat Yearim that the time was long 
for it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel yearned after Yehovah. So when you read 1 Samuel 6, this is, 1 Samuel 6 is when the Ark of the Covenant was actually sent back to the Philistines, sent back by the Philistines. And um, it was sent back by the Philistines. It was sent by the Philistines on a brand new cart that the Philistines had, um, that the Philistines had made and sent it on the cart. And that was how the Philistines sent it back. The reason that I wanted to read 7-1 is because it lets you know that the Ark of the Covenant was in the house of Abinadab in the hill, and Abinadab sanctified his son to keep the Ark. So now just go to 2 Samuel chapter 6. And read one through four. Second Samuel chapter six, verse one. And David again gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baale Yehuda to bring up from thence the ark of Yah, mm -hmm. whereupon is called the name, even the name of Yehovah of hosts that sitteth upon the cherubim. And they set the ark of Yah upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in the hill. And Uzai and Akio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart, mm -hmm. and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was in the hill with the, with the ark of Yah, and Akio went before the ark. All right. And the reason that I wanted him to read 6 is so that you can see that this ark, the ark was in the house of Abinadab. Uh, of Abinadab. And Abinadab, his, he sanctified his, what was probably the oldest son, to tend to the ark while it was there. But he also had his two younger sons, Uzzah and Akio, that the ark was in their house. So they were familiar with this ark for all their lives. And so now when we go into chapter 13 of, second, of First Chronicles, I just wanted to give that background so when we go up in chapter 13, we can kind of see exactly what was happening. We have a little bit more context. Come on. Back to the 13? Chapter 13, yes. Verse 1, please. We're in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 13, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and of hundreds, even with every leader. Amen. And David said unto all the assembly of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and if it be of Jehovah our God, let us send abroad everywhere unto our brethren that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them to the priests and Levites that are in their cities, and have open land about them, that they may gather themselves unto us. Mm -hmm. And let us bring back the ark of our God to us, for we sought not unto it into the days of Saul. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's all talking about the same history, all talking about the return of the ark. One of the things that I want us to touch on is, so when we, we go through the history so we know what we as a people been through, but we also go through the history so that we can equate some of the things that happened then so that we can glean and interpolate information for the things that will help us now. And one of the things that I think is, is a salient point here is you see that before David did anything, and you don't, you don't find this in, in a history in, in 2 Samuel, but before he did anything, it said David consulted with the thousands, with the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds and every leader. And he spoke to all the assembly of Israel, and he had a conversation with everybody to get all of Israel involved in bringing this um, in bringing the ark back. And the reason that I think that that's important is because, or the thing that I believe that we can glean from that is for us in these days and times, as we say that we're beginning to stay, take more steps towards unity, these are the types of unified steps that we need to begin to take. We can't just call on us we need to call on everybody. So now it's a point where we need to start to have more conversation with our brothers and sisters in Charlotte. It's, th it's the time that we need to start having more conversations with our brothers and sisters in the New York area so that we can start to do things and start to do things together. I, I, I believe that one of the things that we truly need to consider 
is if you ask Israel as a whole now, and again, as I always talk about Israel, I'm talking about those of us who are Torah-based. I'm talking about those of us who are Messianic. I'm talking about those of us who, who are Christian. We, as Israel, need to figure out a way to start to do things together. We need to work on breaching, uh, bridging some of the gaps that we have so that we can do things together. So you see, one of the things, if you actually go through the history of David, you'll see that this wasn't a time where everybody was united and gathered because they were still upset. There was a lot of Benjamites that were still upset that David was king and not the family of Saul. Mm -hmm. So there was dissension there. There was conflict. There were people who were at odds with each other. But one of the things that you saw that David tried to do was David tried to reach out with everybody, to everybody, and consult with everybody because at a certain point they needed to make national decisions and not just decisions that were locally based, not just decisions that were tribe based. And so what I'm saying is we as a people, excuse me, need to begin to make national decisions. We need to make decisions that are more than just congregation based. The fact of the matter is we have a nice congregation. We make the money that we make and all of those different things. Other congregations have and they make the money that they make. But at what point do we now start to come together and start putting everything that we have together so that we can make national decisions and not just congregation based? Because when you read Torah, when you read scripture, one of the things that you're, is going to be consistent always is that the decisions were not congregation based. The decisions were not tribe based. Decisions were national based. And if we say we're getting back to God, I understand that we had to go through our steps and stages. Congregations was a step in us moving forward. Congregations was not the last step in our progress moving forward. Come on. And all the assembly said that they would do so. For the thing, that, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David assembled all Israel together, from Shehor, the brook of Egypt, even unto the entrance of Hamat, to bring the ark of God from Kiryat Yearim. And David went up, and all Israel to Baalah, that is, to Kiryat Yearim, which belonged to Yehuda, to bring up from thence the ark of Yah, Yehoah that sitteth upon the cherubim, whereon is called the name. Okay. And they set the ark of Yah upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab. Mm -hmm. And Uzzah and Akio drove the cart. Mm -hmm. And Dawid and all Israel played before God with all their might, even with songs and with harps and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of Jehovah was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him, because he put forth his hand to the ark. Okay, go ahead. And there he died before God. So I just want to take some time to... I really want us to just hear me for a minute. Just hear me. They were out there. Uh -huh. They were carrying the ark. Mm -hmm. Everybody was singing. Right. Everybody was dancing. They was clapping. They had all types of instruments. You see what you heard here um, about 10 minutes ago? It was nothing compared to what they had, what they were doing when they were bringing this ark up. And God wasn't happy and it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say that for people to get down. I want us to understand the God that we're dealing with. When God is not happy, you can do all of the singing you want. That's fact. When God is not happy, you can do all of the clapping that you want and raising and shouting and flipping and all of that other stuff that you want. If God is not happy, it doesn't matter. And I know those are the hard conversations that we have to have sometimes, but those are the conversations that we have to have nonetheless. That's right. The other thing that I want to touch on is, like I said, that ark was in Uzzah's house for at least 20 years. Uzzah saw that ark. Is there's no telling what Uzzah did when the ark was in the house. He was familiar with the ark. He probably cleaned it too and did all of those different things. Yet, 
when they put it on the cart and they were bringing it out the way the Philistines did, mm -hmm. it was not acceptable. And God showed his displeasure with the process in which they used when it's not acceptable. And so I just want us to consider this. When we're taking on customs That's and right. traditions and all of those different things that are not in accordance with God, that are not ordained or prescribed by God, Teach us. is highly likely that no matter how many people you get out there, That's right. no matter how many people you have doing it, no matter how pretty everybody looks, no matter how nice everybody's singing, it's highly likely that it won't be accepted even to the smallest detail that we may think as insignificant, but God does not. I agree. That's a fact. Come on. And David was displeased because Jehovah had broken forth upon Uzzah, and that place was called was called Perez Uzzah unto this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? Come on. So David removed not the ark unto him into the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. Come on. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. All right. So now we're going to go into 14. 14 is... Is um, speaks about different things, and 15 is going to pick up back in uh, speaking about the ark. Um, come on, into 14. Chapter 14, verse 1, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Hudam, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees and masons and carpenters to build him a house. And David perceived that Jehovah had established him king over Israel, mm -hmm. for his kingdom was exalted exceedingly for his people, Israel's sake. Mm -hmm. So and they, before, before we get into to that part, one of the things that I also see as consistent here is David didn't do, and you're going to see it further, David didn't do things haphazard. David didn't do things that were off the cuff. Right. David always sought what, was, what God would have wanted him to do first. And that was one of the things that made David so pleasing in the eyes of God because that was, all, that was what David always did. Even in the situation with Bathsheba, uh, with Bathsheba, David still checked first. He just made the wrong decision. Right. But he still checked. And you see what David is doing right here um, in 14, and it's talking about he went and he sent to Hudam, king of Tyre, and he sent messages and, and spoke about cedar trees and masons, masons and carpenters and all of those different things. What I want us to understand that if we want to move forward, you can't move forward making prep, uh, doing things off the cuff. Everything requires preparation. If you're going to buy a house, buying a house requires preparation. And for those who have ever bought a house, if you tried to buy a house off the cuff, one of the first things that you realize, as soon as you went to the mortgage people, they said to you, okay, we need this, 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 and this, and 20%. And if you're not prepared to buy a house, guess what? You're not buying a house. And so what I'm saying is, for us as a people, I know we want to do a lot of things. And it's good that we want to do a lot of things. However, in order to do these things, we need to be able to make preparations to do the things that we want to do. If we say we want our children to be great, guess what? We need to start to prepare a path for our children to be great. Every other nation prepares a path for their children to be great. College funds is supposed to start right after the circumcision. We need to begin to prepare. Um, we want the reason, one of the major reasons that we want our children to stay at home for as long as possible, because we don't want you to come and just because you get an apartment, you get a little job, and you want to go out and get an apartment to struggle. Trust me, you don't want to struggle. You want to stay home as long as possible so that you can save as much as possible so that when you go out, you can go out prepared to do something. And I think what happens is oftentimes we don't prepare our children and then we look at ourselves now and we wonder why 
we're, we as a people are in such a disarray because we're not taking the necessary steps to prepare. Guess what? You want a new place? You need to prepare. You need to make sure you have enough money. How do you make sure you have enough money? You need to know how much certain things cost. Those are the preparations that we need to make for everything that we need to do. However, now is the time, because we're talking about national movements and national things, now is the time that we need to start to be speaking to other congregations on certain things. I know we don't get along because you kept Yom Kippur yesterday. I get that. But isn't it a point where we can agree on something, where we can start to move forward? I mean, not for nothing. The people who we buy clothes from didn't even keep Yom Kippur at all. We do business with them, but we won't do business with us. And these are the types of preparations that we need to do, and these are the types of card conversations that we need to have, and I get that. I understand it makes people uncomfortable, and I understand, but guess what? How are you going to get there? How are we going to get there? Come on. And David took more wives at Jerusalem, and David begot more sons and daughters. And these are the names of the children whom he had in Jerusalem, Shamua and Shobab, Natan and Solomon, and Ebkar and Elishua, and El Pelet, and Noga, and Nepheg, and Yaphia, and Elishama, and Be'eliada, and Eliphelet. And when the Philistines heard that David was in. Before you go into the Philistines, David took more wives when he was prepared to be able to take more wives. The ones that he had when he was in a will, he, he went out with the one, and then he, um, he had Mikal, he went out with the one. Abigail just kind of came because of the circumstances that Abigail uh, came with. Mm -hmm. But David was prepared to take another wife or more wives because he knew that taking more wives means what? It's a high probability that you're going to have more children. And guess what? Children cost money. And so we need to be financially, he needed to be financially prepared for that because, again, it's not, a, it's not right that we bring people in the world to struggle. It's not right that we allow people to go out there to struggle. So I know you want to go because she cute. I know you want to go because he cute and y'all having all of these feelings. Guess what? Sometimes you need to stay home for a little while longer because cute don't pay bills. Trust me, I know. I'm cute. And my cute don't get me my bills paid. <laughs> I know it. I'm telling you. Don't get my bills paid. So when you find somebody's daughter cute, when you find somebody's son cute, guess what? You need to start to make some cute money so that you can go to some parents and talk about this is what you're prepared to do to make a better life for both of you. The alternative to not speaking to somebody's parents and just going to do it anyway, we don't need to talk about the alternative, do we? Because the alternative ain't going to work out well for nobody. I can guarantee you, for some people, the alternative is not going to work out for everybody. Come on. And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. And David heard of it and went out to meet them. Come on. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and will thou deliver them into my hand? They were already out there. They were already out there, and they were already waiting. David heard about it. David went to God first and asked God, What do you want me to do? What do you have in mind? What do you have planned? What do you want me to do? Come on. And Jehovah said unto him, Go up, go. for I will deliver them into thy hand. If I dare say... If you're about to approach to do something that you can't approach God for, that might give you an indication that you shouldn't be doing it. Because if you can't go to God and ask God, bless, bless me with this, then maybe that's not something you should be doing. 
God bless me to make a harlot out of this man's daughter. It just don't really seem this don't really seem to sound right. I'm just saying. God bless me to sneak around with this boy and let my parents not find out. Don't really sound right. Praise. If you can't go to God, you need to reconsider what it is that you're thinking about doing. Come on. So they came up to Baal Pedatim, and David smote them, smote them there. And David said, God hath broken my enemies by my hand like the breach of waters. Therefore, they called the name of that place Baal Pedatim. Mm -hmm. And they left their gods there, and David gave commandment, and they were burned with fire. And the Philistines yet again made a raid in the valley, and David inquired again of God. And God said unto him, Hold on. So you see, so David had just won. Right. David went to God. God said, go. The Phil same Philistines came up again at a different time. David did not take it upon himself to say, God is with me. I'm going to go because this already happened. David asked again. Come on. And God said unto him, thou shalt not go Don't up go. after them. Turn now away. it's different. Mm -hmm. Don't go. I want you to do something different now. Everything that every step that we need to take, we need to go to God first. Right. If it's a test, if it's a job, if it's a, a, a spouse, if whatever it is, whatever step that we need to take, we need to learn to go to God first. The Maftir talked about it this morning. This man was beloved of God, and these were part of the reasons why. Always went to God first. And I just want to circle back to, you see, in 13, going back to 13, it said David took counsel and all of them agreed to, um, all of them agreed that, yes, bringing up the ark is a good idea. Let's do it. Mischief still happened. Just because you have counsel don't always mean everything is going to go okay. Right. Because some things won't go okay if everything isn't in its proper place and in its proper perspective. Does that make sense? David went to God again. God told him, don't go up. I want you to do it this way. Come on. Turn away from them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And it shall be when thou hearest the sound of marching in the top of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt go out to battle. For God has gone, up out, for God has gone out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did as, command, as God commanded him. And they smoked the host of the Philistines from Gibeon even to Gezer. And the fame of Dawid went out into all lands. And Jehovah brought the fear of him upon all nations. Everybody was scared of David. And David will acknowledge in a minute that they're not scared of me because of me. Right. They're scared of me because of God. That's right. David was always a warrior. That's what, that's what they got David in trouble in the first place. Being a warrior and being some red cute boy. And he came out and, they, and David slew his, Saul through his, slew his thousands. David slew his ten thousands. Ten thousands? What? Saul ain't appreciate that. The rest is history. But with everything, David always went to God. Come on. Chapter 15. And David made him houses in the city of David. And he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them hath Jehovah chosen to carry the ark of Jehovah and to minister unto him forever. So, on a couple of things that's in these couple of verses. The first thing is David did not allow the disappointment to stop him and cause him to quit. Mm -hmm. He had a setback. He went back, researched probably Torah, to find out how it was supposed to be done. Right. He set up the tent and everything, still made the preparations that he needed to make, and then he took the setback that he had, and he figured out a way to go to God again to find out how to do it right. Guess what? It's okay. I need y'all to hear me. It's okay to admit you made a mistake. It's okay to admit that you made a mistake that caused somebody to die. However, this is the way we fix it. I think the problem comes in 
when a lot of us don't want to admit that we made a mistake. A lot of times we don't want to admit that we made a bad decision. Because I just want us to consider this. For, and, and again, much love, much respect to the people that, that, that are doing the holy days at different times that we are. But guess what? If we're doing holy days at different times, somebody's wrong. Absolutely. And it might be both of us. It might be all of us. We all might be wrong. But if two people can't get along in Torah, at least one of them is wrong. So if you can acknowledge, because we all say this as a catchphrase, we all say it as, listen, nobody's perfect, and, and, and God gives his, um, God, everybody has a piece of the puzzle. And we say it, but do we really believe it? Because if we say everybody has a piece of the puzzle, that literally means that if they have the piece of the puzzle, that means that I don't have it. So that means I need to be humble enough to acknowledge that there's a piece of the puzzle I don't have. The hardest part is I just don't know which piece. And they don't know which piece. And none of us really know which piece we have that's, that's good or bad, right or wrong. None of us really know which piece. We just know we have a bunch of pieces, and we have a bunch of scattered people around, and we need to figure out how to bring one people back to one God. <clears throat> Come on. And David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up mm -hmm. the ark of Jehovah into its place, which he had prepared for it. And David gathered together the sons of Aharon and the Levites of the sons of Kohat, Uriel the chief and his brethren 120, mm -hmm. of the sons of Merari, Asai the chief and his brethren 220, mm -hmm. of the sons of Gershom, Yoel the chief and his brethren 130, mm -hmm. of the sons of Eli Zaphon, Shammai the chief and his brethren 200, mm -hmm. of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief and his brethren four score, of the sons of Uziel, Aminadab the chief, and his brethren 112. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, and Yoel, Shemaiah, and Eliel, Aminadab, and said unto them, Ye are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of Jehovah, the God of Israel, unto the place that I have prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Come because on. ye bore it not at the first, Jehovah our God made a breach upon us, but that we saw him not according to the ordinance. So listen, the first thing that you don't read in the other piece of history that you read here is David says, sanctify yourselves, both you and your brethren, so that you can bring up the ark. Right. That gives the impression that they didn't do that before. Right. That gives the impression that what they did last time was they just thought, we just going to come any old way, and we just going to grab this ark, we're going to put it on a cart, and we're going to go before God. And God shows in every way that he can, you don't go to God just any way. Last time I checked, God is king. Am I right or wrong? I said last time I checked, God is king, right or wrong. You don't go before God any way you want. You go before God in a manner which he prescribes. Right. We read when, when it talks about, we read when it talks about Aharon and it talked about how he comes before um, God for Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. You come like this, this, and this. Make sure you wash. Make sure you do this. Put on this garment, do this, do that. And we also see the alternative from when Aharon's sons came right. before God any way they chose. So if you know you're coming before God, put an iron to that shirt. Put a crease in those pants. And come before God like you have some respect. Come before God like he is the king that everybody acknowledges that he is. Amen. The other thing, and it doesn't say it here. Actually, it says it in 15, so come on. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of Jehovah, the God of Israel. 
And the children of the Levites bore the ark of God upon their shoulders with the bars thereon, mm -hmm. as Moshe commanded, according to the word of Jehovah. Can you read that again? And, your, and the children of the Levites bore the ark of God upon their shoulders mm -hmm. with the bars thereon, as Moshe commanded, according to the word of Jehovah. So that means, so when you see as Moshe commanded on the word of Jehovah, that means that Moses, uh, that David referred back to Torah. Am Absolutely. I right or wrong? 100%. David referred back to the document that was left on record on this is how you do things. Am I right or wrong? Yep. When we, we just went through the book of Ezra and we went through the book of Nehemiah. When in Ezra, what did it say? It said that they went and they consulted the Torah. They said they consulted the book of the law and that's how they found out that they were supposed to be keeping a holy day. Am I right or wrong? Right. Everybody throughout history from the beginning of Torah being given till the end when scripture was stopped, everybody went back and consulted Torah to get back to God. Am I right or wrong? That's right. They don't talk about oral Torah, do they? Nope. They don't never say they consulted with the, 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 the traditions that was left down, back in, uh, down. They don't say that. Every time when they wanted to get back to God, they consulted Torah. If we want to get back to God, we need to consult Torah. If we want to get back to God, we need to stop consulting the practices that other people do. Because I know, I know we don't think that it's that bad. I get it. It's not that bad. It's just this. It's just that. Who would have thought carrying a heavy box on a cart was bad mm -hmm. to that point? Who would have thought that him putting his hand to stop the nice, pretty, but polished up golden box from falling on the ground, who would have thought that that was bad? Mm -hmm. I just want us to consider sometimes the things that we think, just because we think it aren't, isn't always right. It's not always the right answer just because it came from me. It's not always the right answer just because it came from you. So they bought an ark, as Moses commanded, and they carried it. And now we're going through the, the process of singing and dancing and all of that again. Come on. And David spoke to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding aloud and lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Yoel, and of his brethren, Asaf, the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Morari, mm -hmm. their brethren, Etan, the son of Cushai, mm -hmm. and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, and Yaaziel, and Shemi Ramot, and Yekiel, and Uni, and Eliab, mm -hmm. and Benaiah, and Maasiah, and Metzitiah, and Eliphalehu, and Mikniah, and Obed, Edom, and Yeiel, the doorkeepers. So, I just want to, and I'm just going to read back when it said that he... Um, and it said, um, and Uriah, the chief priest, and a brethren, 120, and the sons of the sons of Mamari, and Aniah, the chief, and his brethren, 220, and all of those people. So you imagine the amount of people that were outside as they were singing and dancing and clapping. So I understand. I know we got a nice system set up here. So I know when they start drumming and they start singing, I know it sound real nice at home, but I can guarantee you it sound much better in person. That's a fact. I can guarantee you it sound much better in person. Mori Arania sounds much better in person. Even when I was singing, I sounded much better in person. <laughs> Teach us. Why are you laughing? Put them out. <laughs> the point is, is I know we comfortable at home. Mm. I know we comfortable when they say, can we all rise and face the east? And I know when we laying in the bed and we just like <laughs> turn this way and this is east. I understand. That's crazy. I understand. <laughs> but when it's 9 o'clock and you don't have a hybrid schedule and you have to be at work, when they, you, don't, you don't be turning over at work, you be at work. 
During COVID, you at work. I'm just saying. During COVID, you at work. I ain't, I ain't I'm trying not to go into the parties. So you had singers. So what I'm gonna tell you is, and so I think he stopped at um, 19. 19. And so they're gonna talk about these singers. So now we have another opportunity because tomorrow night there's gonna be some singers. And Monday morning, there's gonna be some singers. There's gonna be some singers, right? And there's gonna be some drummers and there's gonna be some food and they're gonna be all of those different things tomorrow night and Monday morning. So I want us to be prepare ourselves now because this is one of those times that God said, um, everybody, every man shall appear and nobody shall appear empty. So, and I know we looked at, we look at that as every man, but that's everybody. Unless you can't make it for the whatever reason that you can't make it, you need to be there and you need to appear. And when it say you need to appear and not empty, that means you need to appear like not empty. I mean, it's self-explanatory, self-explanatory. So maybe that might mean you might bring a tray of food or two trays of food. Uh -huh. I think I heard we're going to have some roti. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hope so. We're going to have some fish. We gonna have some vegetables. We gonna have vegetable and vegan options. <laughs> it said a rack of lamb for Long Island. We gonna have a rack of lamb in Long Island. I don't know. I don't know if it's coming, but we gonna have one in Long Island because we gonna feast. Cause it's a seven day feast. Rack of lamb from Long Island. Come on, wow. man. Come on, man. Rack of lamb from Long Island. But we're going to feast. That's right. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a nice orderly feast. Because the people who can't cook, if you don't really cook so well, this is the time where, like, everything is showcased. So don't start trying new recipes yet and bring them here. Try it at home. Everybody needs to have a taste tester at home. Because y'all, we the still the same black people. Yeah. Fast just passed, and it don't matter because if you bring some bad food, we're going to talk. They're going to talk. This potato salad. That's what That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That's what they're going to they teach you about it. That's what they're going to do. Who put, who put okra in the Rasta pasta? Who did that? Who did that? That I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do that. But. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, fast just passed it. It don't even matter. <laughs> but what's going to happen is we're going to have a nice orderly feast, too, because everybody's going to bring, and the people who don't really cook, we, got, we have some organic napkins coming. <laughs> DCB is the place to be. You can't feast like we're going to be feasting watching TV. I'm just saying that we're going to have a nice orderly feast because what's going to happen is everybody going to bring something. And for those who don't have a specialty yet, you just going to bring your feast fees and work on your specialty for next year. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a nice line. And we understand people coming from out of town and we understand the out of town, the, 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 the three time a year Israelites and all those different things. And what's going to happen is everybody going to eat. However, people not going to start taking trays home until everybody eat first. And, and the people who, who don't have, and we get it, everybody going to eat. And nobody going to say nothing to you. But if you try to come two, three plates on the first serving, talking about this is for, this is for Yokanan. No, no, no. Tell Yokanan to get himself on the line and bring his own plate. And if Yokanine is under two, then he don't need three pieces of chicken and all that mac and cheese because everybody got to eat. Wow. Wow. 
Because everybody got to eat. We got turkey wings coming. <laughs> he looked at me like, he looked at me like. <laughs> it's a seven day feast. I hope we got some turkey. I heard we're going to get a couple of different types. We're going to get some real Spanish rice this time. Like the red rice with the olives in it. We getting that? All that. And we're going to have a nice time. And we're going to sing. And we, huh? <laughs> Tats, they said it's nice you do it all that cooking. <laughs> and we're gonna have a good time because God is good. And we're gonna enjoy ourselves and we're gonna respect each other and we're gonna do all of that because God is good. Come on. 19. So the singers, Heman, Asaf, Etan, were appointed with symbols of brass to sound aloud. And Zechariah and Aziel and Shemir Amot and Yechiel and Uni and Eliab and Maasai and Benaiah with saw trees set to Al Alamot and Matitia and Eliphalehu and Miknehu and Obed Edom and Yeiel and Azaziah with harps on the Sheminit to lead. And Kananiah, chief of the Levites, was over the song. He was mastering the song because he was skillful. And I heard we're going to have about three, four different types of cereal. We're going to get cornflakes. Cheerios, honey nut Cheerios. We're going to even have cereal. We're going to have cereal. Oh, regular Cheerios, no honey nut. Correction. Come on. And better Kaya and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. And so this, just, just to put some context, this was actually um, supposed to be Chief Benjamin's portion. And um, the reason that I did 15 was because... 15 actually goes with 13. But Chief Benjamin wanted me to fully mention, now you see how it says here, um, where it says Elquana was the doorkeeper, Berkaya and Elquana were doorkeepers. He wanted me to say there's always an Elquana at the gate. I'm good, Chief? All right. All right. I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure I cover everything. And Shebaniah and Yehoshaphat. And then Tan El and Amasa, and Zakaria and Benaiah and Eliezer, the priests, did blow with the trumpets before the ark of God, and Obed Edom and Yechiah were doorkeepers for the ark. Come on. So David. And, and you the, know what happened? After the ark got taken last time, after the ark got taken last time, you could best believe the Shomrim that kept this ark, they don't fall asleep. You could best believe that the show Reeve who kept this off was, don't do that, man. Yo, don't do it. Why you do that? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <-hoo>. Yo. <laughs> this is unprofessional. I'm just, I'm just let you know right now. This is real unprofessional. Hold on. But after the art got taken last time, you could best believe that they. <laughs> After the ark, <laughs> after the ark was taken last time, you could best believe that they was making sure that this ark ain't taken again. So you know they made sure they had the best. You know how you always you gotta pick the best people. You gotta pick the best actors for certain parts. You gotta best pick the best singers for certain parts. When you um, when you get in a, a katonin made for the holy day, you don't. You don't try new people for a katonic for the holy day and come in here with a crooked katonic because they're going to laugh at that too. So you got to make sure that whatever you're going to do before God, it needs to be on point. It needs to be pristine. That's a fact. Come on. So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah yeah. out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. Come on. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bore the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah that they sacrificed seven bullocks and seven rams. Amen. And David was clothed with the robe of fine linen and all the Levites that bore the Ark and the singers and Kananiah, the master of the singers in the song. And David had, him, uh, had upon him an ephod of linen Thus all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah with and, shouting. And, and, so, sound, mm -hmm. and so um, they talked about this not too long ago because we are fly and we are flashy people. And so you know the singer was the best singer. People came in. That's when they came in. Holy days, feast days. That's when they came in with their brand new stuff. Because we like to shine. Even though God is king, 
we still like to shine. That's a fact. And it's okay. It's okay. Because what did God say? He gave the high priest. The high priest had a nice, nice blue That's right. robe. That's right. And the purpose of the blue robe was for glory and, and for, for splendor. splendor. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you know when those princes came up and they bought their offerings, the one prince came up and he, and everything was pressed, and he went up. And then when the second prince went up, he was like, oh, he, he kind of, he kind of, I, I need to make sure I outdo him. Yeah. And then the third prince after that, and don't be the prince that slips a little bit, or your offering drops, you know, a little bit. Ah, you, okay, at least I'm not the worst one going up today. Because that's who we are. And if we want, because this is part of what we need to give our children to, right? If we want our children to enjoy the days that God gave us, we need to give them joy in the days that God gave us. That makes sense? Listen, who in here couldn't wait till Christmas to open up gifts? I know more of y'all couldn't wait to Christmas <laughs> to open up gifts. Right. Only people who should have their hand down is Heath, uh, is Mac, Ron, and Heath, and them up there. Everybody else, y'all know y'all need to put your hands up. I got my hand up. Sorry? Chief Benyamin, put your hand up. Chief Saul, put both hands up because you was in the church. And you was doing the, the, the holy water and all that on, on Chris Mann. Put your hand up. It's okay. It's okay. All that. Oh man. All that. It's okay. So what I'm saying is, the same energy that you have for Christmas, keep that same energy. When Easter was coming and you knew you was about to get you a fly new fila suit, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. So don't come in here tomorrow looking. It don't come in here tomorrow night or Monday looking slovenly and all those different things. Come in here with something nice. Because we coming before God. Come in here with a nice white something on. And I know because who's probably going to make spaghetti. Chief, what's going to make spaghetti? I'm going to take it off and I'm going to eat because I know I will mess up a white shirt in a minute. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to eat. Then I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to come back and I'm going to be looking like I be looking. Amen. Because we coming before God. Come on. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of Jehovah shouting and with sound of the horn and with trumpets and with cymbals sounding aloud with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass as the ark of the covenant of Jehovah came to the city of David that Michal the daughter of Saul looked out at the window and saw King David dancing and making merry and she despised him in her heart. Ooh. She was the only one who was hating? Everybody else happy. And you read from the other, you read in, in um, Second Sam, you, you read the nature of that interaction. Right. So we're not going to get into that. But listen, when somebody putting up, uh, when they putting up their presentation before God, let them do what they do. That's right. Let them enjoy themselves. Right. Let them sing. Let them dance. Let them, let them do all that. Because they, that's them appreciating what God gave them. Hallelujah. Come on, we're just going to read 1, 2, and 3. One Chapter three. 16, verse 1, hallelujah. hallelujah. And they brought in the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Jehovah. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to everyone a loaf of bread and a cake made in the pan and a sweet cake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All honors, praises, respect, acknowledgement, and thanks I offer unto the great king of the universe, to the God of our fathers, to the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, and the God of Yahoo. Thanking him for all things and everything. I bid you in the tongue of our forefathers. Shabbat shalom, Nicole. Shabbat shalom, Nicole.